you, Sam Ray, for spoke, uh, sponsoring and hosting this prayer breakfast. They've done a wonderful job at set up and uh, bringing everybody in. And of course, they uh, did the smart thing and got one of our more inspirational soldiers here on post to be the guest speaker. That's uh, Sergeant Ken Lewis. And we'll look forward to his message. But right now, we'll uh, go ahead and start with prayer, and then uh, I'll get up and start to dismiss tables for uh, for our eating pleasure. So uh, we'll start out with the invocation with uh, Staff Sergeant Jackson. Good morning, Fort Bean Street. Let us pray. Father, we come before you now, humbly as we know how, just thanking you for this opportunity you have given us to come together to commune with you. Father, we honor and reverence you simply for who you are. We acknowledge you as the creator of all things, and we know that all things are possible with you. We ask that you would speak to us through the guest speaker, and that we all will be able to receive just what we need from you to equip us to return to our workplaces, our homes, and our communities and provoke change. Lord, we ask that you bless the food that we're about to receive, bless the hands that prepared it, and let it be used for the pure nourishment of our bodies. We ask all these things in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. All right, now to get to the part where everybody's looking forward to because we all have hungry tummies. I'd like to start with this table first, and if, uh, if you'd like to just go up and, and start, and as the line gets shorter, I know that the rest of the tables will follow. No particular order, but please, as the line gets shorter, please don't get, please don't let it get empty. One of so you guys just keep us in prayer as we come before you. Man, I just wanted to open up with a, with a scripture because, you know, we, if we come out here and fellowship and do all this stuff and we won't get any word, we won't have that, the thing that's going to keep us. And so from Psalms 117, from 117, it says, Praise the Lord, all ye nations, praise him. All ye people, for his merciful kindness is great towards us, and the truth of the Lord endureth forever. Amen. We got to come out in this place and we got to thank God for his grace and his mercy. Because his grace and his mercy is what's keeping us today. His mercy look beyond our faults and it meet every one of our needs. Oh, bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. We've come to bless your name, oh God. We look past the people. We've ascended to the throne of God where we can join in with the four beasts and the 24 elders. And they're laying on their faces and they're worshiping him. So this morning, we just plead that y'all join in with us as we go before God. And as we worship him with the heavenly host.
Well, if you want to know uh, more about Sergeant Lewis, his bio is on the back. And, uh, but uh, I have to stand up here and say, well, you know Sergeant Lewis. You know him sometimes more from his emails coming from ops. Some of you love him from it. <laughs> And some of you are looking at that email and going, oh no, another email from Sergeant Lewis. But we all do know him from, that, from uh, several months ago. Uh, got a lot of good response with his message. And so we'll pray again for God's blessings as he, gets, as he uh, stands up here to deliver another message to us. As God speaks to him through the Spirit. And we again, we welcome Sergeant First Class and Lewis. I've been wanting to hold stand behind the mic, so y'all gotta work with me. Give me your glory, who we came here to glory today. Because if you didn't get up this morning, you glory to God. I don't know why you came. I don't know why you got in your chair. It wasn't for the food. Because he that is, since I am that I am, I woke up this morning because he is. If that's not the glory you came here for, I asked that you go on back out the door. I'm sorry, but you should hear me. I thank you for hold. Let me host this. Let me come here and speak because I know that God is God all by Himself. He don't need nobody else to give Him praise. You can look up in the morning and see the mountains and the sun. Um, you understand that God gave inspiration when we speak. That the scripture came in this morning, God changed it. And you got to be on time with God. That's what God, I've been studying this word for the judges for so long, and he said, that's not what I want you to speak this morning. I understand the scripture I chose this morning that God gave me, it's from Peter. God was speaking to Peter, you got to know who Peter was. Peter was one of the twelve who walked with Jesus. Now this one who walked with Jesus was the one who always had something to say. There's been talking, but Peter had something to say. When he said something, he was like, okay, why did he even say that? Peter was a guy that couldn't get a break, but yet would speak in, in tongues, and then he would set things straight. Peter was that guy. Well, here in the scripture, Jesus asked me, he said, well, you lead me too. You got to See, I believe in a, what's called a PIP, pre-intermediate post. Scripture and church is scripture. If you can't find the answer in the scripture you're reading, you read before, you read after, you'll find the answer. Bible and church is Bible. And when you understand that, you get understanding of who God is. Now, knowing who God is and who all He is and He done in your life, I was asked myself this morning if Peter was asked this question and he's the only one that spoke up, he said, Where else would I go? Why would he ask that question? To what purpose would he ask? I walked with you for three years. Understand who Peter Peter was the one who was on the boat when Jesus initially and Matthew called them out. And he was on the boat. And he put it to you like this Peter was a fisherman. Peter's father was a fisherman. Peter's father's father was a fisherman this time. If all these people were fishermen, this is his profession. This is what he did. This is what he knew. This is what all he knew. This is all that Peter did. This is what Peter, this was his profession. But he said, push out a little farther in the boat because he was trying to get away from the crowd. So he's sitting in the boat and Peter, in the Bible where he said, he did not catch anything all night. He ain't caught no fish. He's a fisherman. I'm a lawyer. I ain't defending nobody. I'm a doctor. I ain't fixed nobody. Work with me now. Go somewhere with me this. Peter is a fisherman. He ain't caught no fish. Jesus is a carpenter. And he's telling him, go out a little further now. Now throw down your nets. Peter looks at him and says, I would ask to discuss and challenge with scholars today because when he looked at him, he said, I'm going to do this because you said so. Like a small child, you want me to go ahead and do this now because you said so? Understand that Peter was a fisherman. This is what he did. This is his profession. This is what he was. He was a fisherman. Understand. So he tells him, push out a little further. And he says, okay, drop your nets. So he drops his net. And Peter did it reluctantly. And he caught so many fish. Understand, God will never bless you now just for you. He will never give you something just for you. Why do I say that? Because Peter caught so many fish, he had to tell John and Zebedee and everybody else on the shore. He caught so many fish that he had to leave everything behind. But you see, Peter was after the fish. Peter had been fishing all day. He ain't caught no fish. He just caught a lot of fish. When you're after the blessing, and you get your blessing, Peter left his blessing and went after the blessed servant. He that gave you the blessing, not the blessing. I'm playing the cards, trying to get a million dollars, but I left a million dollars, to go after the Savior. I understand you got to put it in perspective who Peter was. 
This is who Peter was. When he asked him, he said that you would know who I am. When he's up to Peter, and Peter says, where else am I going to go? You have to ask yourself, why did he ask that question? When he left that boat in, with, with John and Zebedee, when he left that boat, understand, the Bible says he left his father. You've got to understand this time frame. He left his father there. You didn't leave your father's business at this time. You stayed with daddy. Daddy had a business, you ran the business with daddy. You stayed with daddy, you didn't go nowhere with daddy, you stayed with daddy. You stayed there and ran the business, mama wasn't going to do it. You had to support the family. But he left everything he knew, and Jesus said, I'll make you fish him in a minute. And he left, he just ran out, took everything with him. He said, don't take a coat, don't bring shoes, don't bring that, just come with me. You got to leave everything you know to be possible to follow the Savior. If you believe that not in your heart, you're going to miss the boat. He told him to drop his hand, cost me fish, and he told somebody else, and then he left it behind. You're going to catch something in your life, and you're going to think it's your blessing, and you're going to leave it behind. If you don't, you're going to miss God. So we come back to the point where he asks him, he says, well, will you leave me too? Will you leave? Where am I going to go? Did I not leave the boat to come after you? Did I not leave my father's business to come with you? Where will I go? Where will I see this? Where will I have, who else has the words of life that I might have the manifestation in my own life? I was watching the Golden Girls. How many of y'all watch the Golden Girls? <laughs> oh, y'all, y'all some Golden Girl boy, look at y'all. All right. So Viv, my wife, we were in, uh, we were in Detroit. And I was watching the Golden Girls and my wife saw me write down some notes watching the Golden Girls. God speaks to me through movie, TV and movies and any other inspiration a lot of times except through his word. You gotta be looking for God. So Sophia was um, to date this guy. He was he had a uh, all time. So Sophia was in there with him, and she was sitting down on a stoop, and she was holding his hand. And the and the, the girl, the boy, the guy's uh, mother, her his daughter, excuse me, and Sophia's mom, a daughter, were standing there talking. She said she just doesn't know. She said doesn't know what he has Alzheimer's and he's losing. And Sophia was so proud that she had found somebody her age who was a friend, and she was holding his hand and being all you know, sweet old man, you know. He, 90 years old. How old man can you be? But still, she's holding his hand. So, the promise wasn't given to him. All right, it wasn't no Sarah Moses thing, all right? So, she's holding his hand, and he's losing it. So when she gets back home, and, and Sophia's daughter looks at her, and she says, you know, Mom, he has Alzheimer's. Sophia looked, and you know, Golden Girls is a goofy show, but for this moment, she said something very distinct and very pronounced. She says, I've lived my whole life that I find peace. But she said, you live so long. For what purpose? Just so you can be taken away from you? And I heard God distinctly say to me, he says, if your relationship is with me, you can't lose out on life. You'll never ask that question. Because if we talk about religion, and talk about churches, and all that, it's about a relationship. It's about a relationship. I don't want to get away from all that. It's about a relationship. If your relationship is not with your Savior, your God, you're going to miss out. Am I not moving too much? You say I walk too much. <laughs> That's how they say I was running back and forth. So I want, I want to be focused today. That here, if we're not focused on God, we're going to miss what he has for us. If your question is not, when Jesus asked him, he said, will you lead me too? He asked us today, will you lead me too? I chose Judges 18 because I was talking about so what about praise. What is the importance of praise in your life? Praise is a humbling experience. Why? You cannot, in your right mind, stand up and to begin to worship a God who is so great and wonderful. Look at the stars, the mountains, the moons, the clouds every day and not wonder how wonderful He is in your life. It begins to bring you to a place. In Judges 18, there was a story of Benjamin. Benjamin was one of the tribes of Israel, one of the twelve. And then there was the other 11. Benjamin had sinned and done wrong. And then we came to the point where they had done so much wrong that the other 11 had to come against their brother. And they said, well, who will you send first? He said, send Judah. Catch this. Anybody know what Judah means in Hebrew? I will always tell you to send praise first. Praise will always be the first in the battle. 
Praise will always be the first in what it is you're trying to conquer in your life. Praise will always be the first of what you have set forth and you want to get done in your life. If praise is not first, sometimes you're going to miss it. You've got to lift your hands up in the midst of a circumstance. You've got to lift your hands up and praise Him when He is. You've got to lift your hands up and tell Him, you know what, God, I love you for who you are. It does not matter what's going on in my life. I don't care what the first song that commanded anybody else says. I know that I love you and I'm going to praise you because of who you are. It doesn't matter that I've had somebody die in my life. It doesn't matter that somebody else has set something up. It doesn't matter that all these things have happened in my life. I'm going to praise you regardless. I've got to lift my hands. That's how sometimes the world will sit here and tell you. You say, I praise you. Yeah, but how can you praise him? Because you're broke. You ain't got no money. You living on the street. I'm going to praise him anyway because he's my God. He's setting me up for And I'm going to call him as he is. When you learn to do that, you set forth your mind. Your mind. And we, we teach children. We teach these kids. Oh, let me, you, you set your mind to it. You can do it. Why is God not the same way? Why is not the, the Spirit of the Lord the same way? If I can't set my mind to him, why would I get up anymore? You got to find a quiet place. You got to find a quiet closet in your home. Don't look to go into the church and pray. Don't look come in here and look at me because I'm in a quiet. My wife, no, I go take a walk in it quick. My wife will tell me in a heartbeat, you know, I love you. I just don't like you right now. She is quick to tell me that. And you have to come to that kind of understanding. She loves me. Sometimes she just don't like it. I get on her nerves. I know that. I think you need to take a walk. And I, you know what? I'm like, Adam, you gave me this woman. You need to deal with her. <laughs> God, you gave me this man, but you know what? Mm. Woo. Maybe you need to go talk to your girlfriends. But understanding who God is, you got to set this in real notion of real focus. Keep me on time because I don't want to overrun time. Oh, there's, there's a clock. All right, we good. Is that clock accurate? Look, that's slow. But anyway, here God is telling us, if you're getting called to do what I called you to do, you've got to praise me. In the midst of everything that's going on in your life. Some of us are going some things right now. We got issues abounding. And we're trying to deal with them on our level. We're trying to deal with them. God said, would you just come to me? Somebody always try to walk like, I would come to church if I could get it right. I would praise him if I could get my life right. I would praise him if I had the right shoes. I would praise him if I could get to the church. Stop worrying about how you're going to do it and just do it. Nike said it best, just do it. Dag it. Couldn't say the other word. Stop trying to get it right and you're not going to do it. You're going to get it right. You're not going to do it. Just do it. Just lift up your hands and praise Him for who He is in your life. He loves you before the foundation of the earth. If you believe that in your heart. People say, well, how do you know that God is real? I'm going to put this out there. How do I know? Because people, uh, we were talking about it all said last night. I said, and uh, they said, well, I can't tell. I said, that's in the message tomorrow. I can't tell you that. Oh, it's in the message. Don't tell us. But, how do I know? I, I can't confirm anyone else in this room. That's why Peter, uh, excuse me, that's why Paul simply said, he said, I pray that I know nothing among any of you. He said, Christ and him crucified. I want to know nobody in you. And it's not personal. But I need to know. That's why a lot of times people, people die, they say, did, did they know Jesus? That's all I need to know. A lot of times the old brothers just say, they come in the house, well, baby, do you, do you know Jesus? That's all I want to know, baby, do you know Jesus? Now, baby, know Jesus, do you know Jesus? How they doing? Tearing up the world, boy. Mm -hmm. But anyway, work with me. How do I know that Jesus is real? How do I know that my Savior is real? This is how I know. I got diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis about four months ago. That's why sometimes you see me walking around here like this. I'm all conflicted and deflected and deformed and can't walk. When I'm not on my I'm just being real. I'm being honest with y'all. I ain't gonna lie. I got a lie about. I've done some things in my past that are not worthy to be accepted by God. When you come to that and understand who you are, I've had some adultery, I've had a second marriage, I got some kids from previous marriage. I'm not gonna lie to nobody in here. I know who I am in God. I know what I've done wrong in my life. When you know that, you have to understand who you are first, who you were. I've done wrong in my life. I've had things in my life that are not of him. I got diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis about four months ago. And I woke up, anybody doesn't know anything about rheumatoid arthritis, it's a crooked disease that affects your joints. I woke up in the morning and I didn't know what was going on. I couldn't walk. I said, what's wrong with my feet, man? Plenty of fasciitis through my whole body. What is going on here? I can't walk. I was, couldn't get out of bed. I was all before. And my wife gets up early in the morning to go to work, so she don't see me. I'm in here trying to struggle with three kids with my hands all crimped up. And I have to get up like an hour early just so I can stretch, take some medication, and sit and say, God, you, you're engaged. 
Ooh, I know what Paul was talking about. He said, well, would you take this from me? He said, my grace is sufficient. But you see, I know that he's real because I got up and I, I wasn't able to move it. I went to the doctor and said, okay, we're going to throw And they said, well, it's okay. You'll be all right. Just take this medication. I've been taking this medication for a I'm still crippled. So I said, there's got to be something wrong because it's, it's Dr. Kim. And he, George, you're going to be okay. Just take this medicine. Come back see me for a month. Make sure you get another test too good. I'm like, dude, you ain't answer the phone. But all right, here we are. I got this going on. I got this, this, this room to arthritis, and I'm hurting. And finally, my wife was home one morning. And I got out of the bed, and I rolled out of the bed, and there was a particular morning I could not move. I was hurting, man. I was, I was hurting, man. I was in a lot of pain. And I rolled out that bed. And she sat on the other side of the bed with me, like, what in the world? And she almost teared up, and I said, you, you don't see this in the morning. Just turn your head. And I'm trying to get to the bathroom just so I can get a rag to wash my face. And she is just standing here mystified, looking at me like, what in the world? My son is going to make me coffee because he knows I can't make it for myself <laughs> some mornings. So I get in the bathroom and she's following me, looking at me like I am a stranger in her house. And like, who is this cripple person? Like he's 90 years old. So I grab the rag and I'm all... She says, give it here. And a small, still voice says, you speak to a child. She says, give me the rag. And she, she puts her hand on my shoulder like I can actually fight her at this point. Sit down. <laughs> I'm sitting on, a, on the toilet. And I, can, I can do it. I can do it. She's like, shut up. And she's just looking at me, watching me. Can you make sure it's warm? <laughs> you know, throw the rag at me and watch. And she begins to wash my face like a small child. And all of God said, you know that I'm real because you know what you deserve. You know the life you lived before. And I bless you abundantly more than you were before. You have to look at your own. I know God is blessing me because he gave me a wife to support me in my time of need. I know who I am. I get on her nerves. I know I do. But when you look, stop looking for the the, the Red Sea to part. Stop looking for the skies to open up in your favor. Stop looking for that car. Stop looking for the lotto ticket. Stop looking for those things. God is real and he's right here in your life. He's a foundation that you're looking for right in front of your face. Stop looking from left and right and over here. He's right there. But you have to focus on him. You have to set your mind astray and ablaze with him and say, God, I know that you're real because you're right here. I can touch you. And all I heard him say is, Tell me I'm not real now. I knew the things I'd done in my past. All I can say is God don't deserve your love. That's where grace comes in. He said, I, yet come, my grace is sufficient for you. I called you out of where you were, and I loved you who you are right now. I'm going to continue loving you. All I want you to do is praise me. Get up in the morning and tell me. So what about praise? Praise is the essential thing that gets you up in the morning and starts the day. The sun sits high that we can look up. Sun ain't down here. I ain't looking for the sun on the ground. You have to set your mind ablaze with praise. The question was, well, what about praise? Praise in Judges 18, where Benjamin was yet fighting, and, 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 and the 12 and the 11 came against them. They set their shelves against them. Why? Because of the sin that happened. You have to go back and read Judges chapter 20 and 19 on y'all. That's a little homework for y'all. Y'all, every few months, I go back and read on y'all. I said, y'all, I ain't read nothing. Better be some real up in there. I ain't read nothing. But anyway. That when we go back and read that home, understand. Benjamin had done wrong, and then they, the rest of Israel had come out and said, You know what? You've done wrong. I want you to come with me because give us those who have sinned and done wrong. And they said, What are you doing? I ain't doing it, but I'm not going to do it. So they went back and they sought, they sought God. And they said, You know what? Who will go first? And God said, Send Judah. Judges chapter 1, verse 1. Who will go first? Judah. Praise always goes first. Praise must be coupled with something else. Praise alone is not enough. Say what you want, praise alone is not enough. I know they ain't told y'all praise, 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 praise. You better have something with it. Go to the field, drink water, drink water, drink water, you'll die. Drink all the water you want, you'll die. You better eat something. You better put some salt in that body. You better put some food in there. Say what you want. But here, they masked an army about 450,000 to go against all 21,000 of Benjamin. 
Should be an easy fight. Should work out real good. Real big reasons. We're going to go ahead and take back what we had. We're going to go ahead and handle this real quick. All right, we're going to rush in there with Judah. They said, who are we going to send? God said, send Judah. Put you like this. My wife likes to get on Facebook. And she'd be in there on Facebook, just Facebook in a way, man. She'd be drooling up and all that. My four-year-old would come in there and say, Mama, can I get on the computer? Yes, baby. Can I go outside and jump in front of the street? Sure, baby. <laughs> They asked God, in a sense like that, can, who do we send? He said, send you. All right, we got it. We call with Judah. We call and pray. We got this. We're going to win this war. We're going to knock this out. They lost some 45,000, I believe. Don't quote me on that. But they lost a lot of soldiers. So they came back and we, this, this ain't working. This, this, something is wrong. Something's wrong. We're not doing this right. So they came back. See, what basically happened? So they came back and then they praised him and they prayed. And they said, well, who are we going to send now, God? Who, who going to go? Who going to do this? Go ahead and send you. My four-year-old comes in the room again. Mama, you said I can go on the street, but can I get on the computer? Yes, baby. And so, finally, they go in and they lose again. So all the elders are like, what in the world is going on? We have lost this thing twice. Maybe this ain't what God wants. They had to return to the old ways. They went back and praised and prayed and fasted and built an altar and worshipped. Oh, come on now. Praise must be coupled with worship. If there's no worship, you can't. You see, worship is like intimacy. You see, when you first meet a woman, y'all can say what you want. I'm talking to the men in the room. When you first meet a woman, you be praising her. You be saying, girl, you be good. Mm, I like them jeans you got. I like them shoes you got, girl. Mm. Oh, you praise her. <laughs> but if you want to be intimate, you got to go to a different level. You got to take her to any decent woman. I'm gonna say the decent woman. I'm gonna shake my head. I'm gonna shake my head. The <laughs> decent woman in here. Women with some gumption about themselves. I need to go to dinner. I need some candlelight in the week. I need you to take me on a long walk. You need to meet my mama. Well, I can't meet your mama. Well, you ain't going nowhere. <laughs> you have to set this in a blaze. You have to set this in a blaze. You understand who we are. Intimacy must come through a process. God has already given us an example. If you want to be intimate with a woman in the right way, you will go through the process. You must first praise. You must tell her how good she is. You must tell her how wonderful it is. I believe uh, in... Uh, Proverbs 1 says, who can, who can, she is so fair, who can count her glory? She is far more worth than rubies, diamonds, and pearls. Talking of a woman and her glory. That was just a cheap way of saying, it's cheaper to keep her. God was telling us, it's cheaper to keep her. I just want y'all to know that one. It's cheaper to keep her. Because that he was already telling us that if you get rid of her now, you're going to pay a lot of money. But anyway, here we are. That if you want intimacy with God, there's a process. You have to praise Him and come to a place. When you praise God so much, when you praise Him to the point you understand that I'm not worthy of this that you have given me, I'm not worthy of this that you've set before me, I'm not worthy of all that you've set in my life, you begin to humble yourself. You begin to fall down. You begin to to fall into this place, you begin to humble yourself. I was says that, that you would humble yourself, that in a day and hour, I would lift you up in a time for God's glory. When you begin to praise God from your heart, and see, the of the heart, the mouth shall speak. And a lot of us are speaking about the junk and torment and, and troubles in our life. We speak more torment in our life than anything. You can speak more death in your life. Hey, I don't know, there's a devil running around, but I speak more death in my life than any devil else. I'm going to be honest with you. A lot of times you sit in the front seat with me. Where are we going today? You understand? You have to get him out of your front seat of your car, your house. This worship thing, I said thing because a lot of people not get it. 
Worship is intimacy with God, and you have to go to praise that you can be humbled, be brought down. And when I begin to worship Him for who He is and all that He is, when I begin to praise Him for the mountains, the sun, the stars in my life, that all the children, all that, I'm not going hungry. Anybody coming here on a wheelchair? We all walk in here on our own accord. There's something to praise Him for for all that we've done. And when you begin to praise Him for all that He is, He will humble you, and then you begin to worship. It's that intimacy. It's that place that you meet him. It's that place where he speaks to your heart. It's that place where he says, now I can use you. Now I can lift you up. I can't use you when you were pumped up. I can't use you when you came in on your own accord. I can't use you when you said, I got it all on my own. I'm going to come when I want to come. God said, come when I said, come. This ain't, this ain't a democracy. It's my way on the highway. But understand there's a blessing. When you do it his way, you can't go wrong. You're not going to go wrong. It's this intimacy where we become. So what about praise? Praise must be coupled with worship. It has to come that way. It's always designed that way. If you're praising and not worshiping, you're missing. Go back. Praise him. So my four-year-old comes in the room and my wife, Molly, and she's on, she's on Facebook and she's first made it now. And my wife, Mama! I need you to look at the computer for me because I can't do it. Please. Yes, boy, I'll go with you. God wants to go with you. But you've got to get in the place where God is. That's why Peter simply said, what, where else am I going to go? That's why times you can talk to a lot of elderly people, and they're going to say, well, how long have you been worshiping God? My whole life, baby, I don't know nothing else. That's all I know. When you come to the point that's all you know, you're in the place where God can use you. My wife's grandma was 92 years old. All she knew was God. I remember walking in the room, all she knew was God. She said, baby, and she couldn't say too much, but she walked real, really had to get real close to her. I love God. He's been good to me. 92 years. I might not live to see 65, but it'd be glorious right now because we're going towards this. Oh, I'm telling you, boy, you got to be thankful today because tomorrow you might not be able to lift up holy hands. I might not be able to live up holy hands to us. I gotta speak it as though I know. I might not be able to walk out into the church field. I might not I might be pushed in a wheelchair. I told my wife, I said, if I'm ever pushed in a wheelchair, you need to kill me tomorrow, because I'm not gonna go through this. I'm serious. I won't be laying in the bed, you gotta come and wipe my face and drool me everywhere. Go get you a young man. That's a lie, that's a lie. You told me a lie. You gotta stay right there, woman. You have to come to this thing in your relationship with God. And it has to be like a relationship. And it's a pyramid in my house. There's God, there's me, and there's my wife. And the children are in the middle. When I can't deal across, I've got to go up. And I, I can't deviate from that. I can't go to George and Bob and Paul because they're doing the same thing I'm doing. I can't go to everybody else. They ain't got the inside need or want. God said, you just come to me. Why do you think she touched the hem of his garment? She'd been searching all her life looking for a room to try and get healing. And she said, she tried everywhere else if I could just touch the hem. Sometimes you just have to reach up and tell her, you know what, God, because God has an obligation. If you praise him and tell you know what, you're the God of heaven. You are my child. You are the great savior of the universe. You are saved beyond hood. He has an obligation to come back and tell you who you are and you are his child. He has an obligation. If you know that, if you want to trust and understand, and you know that in your heart, you can get your relationship right. It's not about religion, it's not about these churches, it's about a relationship. Your relationship has to be right. And your foundation has to be true. When you put that all in perspective, and you gather it up, you keep it simple. And I, I, my last message was, there was only four words you need to worry about the Bible. You ain't gonna read the whole Bible good. That was something I ain't gonna read the whole Bible. It's okay. I pray that you would, but first four words in the Bible. Remember the first four words in almost any Bible you can find. In the beginning, God. If you said God at the beginning of your problem, your situation, your day, your work, your leaders, you will see a change in your life. The first four words in the Bible, in the beginning, God. Stop right there. Think. And, and a lot of times you see in the Psalms, you see the word Selah. It means to stop and think. Be quiet. Be still. Know that I'm God. Don't move no more. Think about it. We don't spend enough time. We're so busy trying to do this and do that. Stop. Find you 10 minutes. Go seek his face and say, you know what, God? And just talk to him. Don't make some mystical prayer. Oh, well, I read this one in the I read this one here. Make him talk to him like he's your father. I talked to a girl. She said, well, I haven't, uh, I don't know how to pray. I said, 
He said, Daddy living with you? She said, no. I said, your father's not living with you, but you don't know how to pray. I said, if your daddy called you up today, would you know what to say to him? She said, yes, I know what to say to him. I said, why is talking to God so much different? you got to talk to him. Just be honest with him. Show him, God, I'm frustrated today. I'm tired. I don't know how I'm going to make it. I can't deal with my leaders. I don't know how I'm going to lose the weight. I don't know how I'm going to get over here. I don't know how I'm going to talk to him. But you got to start with Thanksgiving. you got to start with Thanksgiving in your heart. Tell him, you know what, God, I love you for who you are. I praise you for all that you've done in my life. I thank you for everything you've done. you got to praise him. I know I'm going on and on and on. But you have to praise him in the midst of your circumstance of life. We praise him when times are good. When you got the lottery ticket in your hand, you got five thousand dollars. God is good. I know that God is good. But you know God is good. I don't got a lottery ticket. Lose a lottery ticket and see how good God is. Then say what you want. <laughs> Y'all be some mad cussing fools up ahead. You say what you want. Y'all will be. Ain't nobody gonna mention God then. Well, God giveth and He taketh away. Use a lot. <laughs> say what you want. Y'all will not do it. But you have to put it in perspective, understand that who God is. You have to put him in perspective. Everyday life, at work, at home. I go out, sit in my car sometimes, I'm so frustrated. When we're talking about it, I'm like, why? Why are you telling me I'm so blessed? I can't even walk half the time. People look at me like, why? What's wrong with you? At first I'm home, the first one was like, when we're talking about messing with you today? <laughs> no, first I'm good. Why are you walking like that? <laughs> you look like the room with toy, gotcha. Why don't you just sit on down, get some water? I like to say personal, I don't see how you do me. Sun Rogers ain't here either. Oh, I'm going to get on before Sun Rogers out here now. I called Sun Rogers a couple months ago, and we said on my first and praising what is the essential of course. I called Sun Rogers a couple months ago when we were talking about a soldier. And you know, Sun Rogers get excited. Well, I knew that, he talking. Yo, that dude get excited, man. I'm like, what is Sun Rogers talking about? But you have to sit and listen. Sometimes you have to sit and listen to God, sit and listen to Sun Rogers, you got to let it sink in. <laughs> It's like all on a mat. You gotta just let it go. It'll get there. Now, we were talking, and I was sitting on the phone, and I was all disgusted because I wanted something for soldier. And he simply said, he said, he said, "Is he gonna pray or where's he gonna pray?" I said, "I know he's gonna say it again." President, <laughs> he said, "If you're gonna worry, don't pray. If you're gonna pray, work." So I'm always gonna say a lot of stuff to me that be like, you know up here, but that hit me like, wow. You have to be looking for God's word all around you. He's everywhere. He's speaking to people each and every day. I just want to tell y'all, thank you. I ask that you receive and understand that praise must be coupled with worship, and that you put it in your own heart and your mind, and know that God is real. Jesus is real. I'm not sure as I know. But <laughs> when we said that in my life, we understand that in the beginning God, praise must be worth a percussion. I pray that you take this with you and put it in your heart today. In the beginning, God set everything up place in your life that God is real. And that if you you don't hear me say if He can bring you to it, He can bring you through it. But you have to believe. He said, those that come to him must believe that He is. I can go on forever. I'm, I'm gonna cut this short. I said y'all be blessed and all that we do. Uh, take this word with you, put it in your heart, put it in your heart, out of your heart, then I shall speak. Speak peace, love, joy, understanding. Speak the fruits of the Spirit in your life and all that you do. You must plant seeds of peace, joy, love, understanding. You must plant the seeds of the Spirit that you might have fruit, prosper in your life. Because you will see people's fruit. You see some people's fruit is rotten and nasty. And you know, take it. Sometimes you need to pick that fruit up and throw it away and hope that they have more inspiration in their life. Speak into your leaders' lives. Speak into your leaders' lives behind closed doors. Don't hate on them. Don't get mad at them. They're, they're only human. We're only people. All my leaders in here, speak to them. Speak for the president. I know some people don't like him, but speak for him. Pray for him. I'll leave you all in peace. staff and I was briefing the commander and I just uh, mentioned the fact that we were going to have a prayer breakfast and I just mentioned that we were going to have uh, Sergeant First Class Lewis as speaker. <laughs> then right after that everybody looked at me and said, 
Sergeant Lewis is going to speak. <laughs> I didn't realize how blessed I was going to be, how blessed you are, are with uh, the presence of Sergeant Lewis. Wow, what a testimony he has. And I just uh, thank you. Thank you very much. I know I'm inspired and I know you all are and that's the purpose of why we are here to be an inspiration to one another to be a blessing and to go forth and bless others so let us pray God will give you thanks for today we'll give you thanks to God for the privilege of being here for having warm fellowship with one another for enjoying our food being blessed with the words of Sergeant First Class Lewis and most of all for being blessed by you. We thank you, O oh God. We thank you. We ask you that you might bless us with your peace, with your holiness, and your joy today and forevermore. Amen. God bless you. Okay, oh, one quick announcement. Uh, you may notice that uh, you have a different kind of plate in front of you. Please just leave it on the table, and uh, Terry and his crew will take care of.